Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of Cult Film Review. Uh, this week we're doing Buffalo 66. So it's a 1998 film, independent film. We're going to talk about that and much, much more. Uh, just want to say thanks for listening and uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook and all that jazz. You know what? Without anything else though, because I really don't have anything to say, let's just start the show. Your Hollywood system stole our sex and co-opted our violence, so there's nothing left for our kinds of movies. <laughs> I did not hit her. It's not true. Clopex. 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 Up yours, baby. Me and Bubba, my little brother, I listen to you every night. Where in the hell are we? I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> All right, so this week we are talking about Vincent Gallo's Buffalo 66. It's an independent film that came out in 1998. It basically follows uh, a Billy Brown who was in jail for five years for a crime he did not commit. Um, and then when he gets out and he goes uh, visit his, visiting his family and also plotting to kill who he thinks put him in uh, prison for five years. So uh, with that being said... Let's talk about uh, the director himself and the main lead actor because, I mean, it's kind of like the glaring thing here. He's a controversial subject. Is he? Is he Is not? he controversial? I don't know. I think he's definitely a character. He's like, definitely a character, but didn't he... Uh, he's done some crazy stuff uh, in reality. In reality? Well, he, I don't know. I know he, he, sells, wished, his, he, he wished, sells his semen on his own website for a million dollars. He does that? <laughs> That's pretty he, eccentric. Is that it? Yeah, no, he that's didn't. cheap. That's a bargain. <laughs> <laughs> There's all kinds of spec like stipulations. You have to go and read the whole thing. It's hilarious. He wi- he wished uh, cancer on e- uh, Roger Ebert. Really? Yeah, I read Ro- get- I read Roger Ebert's review of this movie, and it wasn't bad. It was no, 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 not this one. Brown Round Bunny was the one. Oh, well, Round Bunny. Well, that movie's fucking terrible. Bunny. Let's just get it's that out there. It's not a good film. It's not it's a good terrible. film. terrible. But he wished cancer on him, and I remember that was a big issue. Wow. Interesting. You know, he has no problem throwing dude, around dude. He has no problem throwing around um, insults. I mean, he insulted his own cast and crew throughout this whole film, from, from what I hear. Yeah. Christina Ricci will never talk to him or work with him again because he was such an asshole. And, like, four years after the film came out, I guess there's some gossip that he that he said she was way too overweight and fat and needed to lose weight and all this stuff. Angelica Houston didn't get along with him. His cinematographer didn't get along with him. It was just like, I don't even know how this movie got made. How do you make a movie when you treat your cast and crew like that? They were already already signed on. Yeah, but it's such a low-budget, you know, independent film. Like, nobody was getting... Paid as much, you know. I'm, I mean, sure, like, they were con- so, I'm sure they were contracts. Though. Well, it's one point yeah, five million. One point five million. So is is Billy Brown? Is is Billy Brown him? And is he Billy Brown? That's the question I want to ask. Is is Vincent Gallo acting, or is that just? Is he just? He's just an asshole all the time. That's how That's he just, is. He's just. He's I just think it was lines. embellished a little bit in the film, but like it's a little more neurotic, probably. Oh, than he is normally. Yeah, like, but. But I yeah, I definitely think this is like a piece about his own life. Well, I know the parents are based on his parents. He said that, yeah, himself. Yeah. And so. actually the, all the whole the whole scenes at the house were all shot in his in, in his, his childhood home. Right, right, right. I'm sure you see again, I think the parents are probably exaggerated in the film a bit more, but yes, I think this story is what somewhat autobiographical. Yeah. Probably minus the prison thing, but no, he I don't know. Went to prison. He probably probably went to prison. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know if that's a fact. But, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. So you know, okay, yes, he's got some controversy around him. Definitely. Um, did he? You know, but does he know what he's doing? Is the question. Like, as far as an actor, as far as an actor, as far as a director, also. I don't know, because here's the thing. With the beginning of the film, I start like uh, 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 the beginning of the movie. I hated. Right, I hated him as a, like a character. Everything, like I'm just like, bro, you're a dude. You can pee literally anywhere. Yeah, so he gets out of jail and he can't. And find And so the he bathroom. gets on a bus for hours, which is like this is the last bus into town. Town is hours away when they're passing tons of towns. 
Yeah. It doesn't make sense because they usually drop, I think they drop you off at the, they don't go like, where are you going? Well, you, so you're saying you don't understand why he just didn't piss anywhere? Anywhere. He could have peed anywhere. He I tried know, to, he tried to piss behind that car and then somebody <laughs> walks up he, like right like at that the moment. Best. Yeah. But and, then and he it's goes the most out, painful intro hold though. Hold on though. He goes out and pees out in the middle, like by a tree out. Yeah, when he finally nowhere, does anyways. go, it's like it's like almost in front of a field, like a school. Or that something was an elementary school. I'm like, yeah. what the hell? <laughs> looks what like s- it. Th- that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. Uh, to me, I felt like that was a very ridiculous setup. And then I was like, it was painful to watch, though. I was feeling it. I yeah, I was too. I, I've been there where you're holding it, you just can't find a place to piss, and it's awful. And I'm, he I'm, gets kicked out of the bus station because the bathroom's closed. They won't let him piss in the restaurant. And yeah, he tries to piss behind the car, and then he finally makes it into the tap dancing studio and that fucking guy in the bathroom. Oh my god, what a classic scene yeah. to me! Nice, what do you say, nice dick? Like, do you? Okay, oh, it's so big. How many of us here have seen this movie before? This is my first I have time watching. Second, second, second. Okay, so the, only, so the only person that hasn't seen it before is Cody. Yep. Cody, I want to ask you this because I've seen this movie a million times. Um, did you pick up on the humor right away, or no. did you take it too ser- seriously? Like, no, I took it, it. I took it way too seriously in the very beginning of the film. Okay, because that's the mood that they give. That's true. You know, it's very that's, melancholy. And... That's the mood they give. Is that it's like I was like, what art house shit? Fuck, am I watching? <laughs> when it really start, like that's when it's when it started. That's originally what I thought, and then about the dinner scene I, is probably when I started catching on. You really we had the dinner scene, like yeah. the that the whole the whole thing well, with the shifter the, car. And yeah, stuff, like the that's, dialogue yeah. starts. I thought like the dialogue starts when he's to, on the phone with his try, mom. I was trying to figure out the character because the stuff when he's on the phone with his mom and he's lying to her is actually really sad. Okay, you took it as sad. That's interesting. I mean, that's interesting. Like, that's sad dialogue. Like I'm like, no, he's I, lying I, to his mother. I about, agree with Cody on that one. It was that was sad. He's sitting there, and you you know he's been lying about being in prison. Right, sure, sure. And he and he's lying about a girlfriend that he does not have. A wife, mm-hmm. a wife. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, like, yeah. And then he run his and he has an, his encounter with Christina Ricci, which you know she notices him right when she, right when he walks into the studio, and then here's the whole conversation that that he has with his mom on the phone, which I guess she probably assumed was sad as well. You know. Like she was probably like, wow, yeah, no, this guy's just making. That's what I got from her character when she was in the bathroom listening to the conversation. Yeah, yeah, and so she walks out, and you know he takes it, or he obviously kidnaps her and uses, like, uses her at first. You know he's not interested in her other than I need this done. Yeah, and kidnaps her. Which is funny. I kidnap I kidnaps her to pretend to be his wife. Yeah, like that's and she I mean, has multi- she has multiple times to get away, but that's obviously not the point of the. No, film. I, and I, I don't think I, I think from the get go, I think she was pretty infatuated with him. As like soon as he like walked into the dance, yeah, studio? she was just like she was like, okay, who's this guy? Kind of, you know, I've, I I I'm attracted to this person, so she didn't want to go, and I think she felt sorry for him after hearing the phone well, call. You already get the impression that he, he tells her basically to fuck off, and then he asks her for a quarter, <laughs> and she totally out. gives him the quarter. <laughs> like, yeah. You got a quarter? Yeah. Give me that fucking quarter. Can I borrow <laughs> just like, it? and that's it. Can I borrow? Like it? he's gonna give <laughs> it back. Borrow? Yeah. <laughs> Don't you say it. thank you. What? Yeah, Don't what? you say thank you? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it probably wasn't until like the dinner scene, and and like the, did, did I start catching on to it? Because there's also like there's also a lot of weird lines that make you that kind of snap you back into this. Well, that was weird. You know, like all of his dad's lines with Christina Ricci are very rapey and weird. Yeah. Oh, very. Oh, creepy. that that whole character is rapey and weird. Yeah, like it's very weird. And but mm-hmm. this that seeing scene is like I was. That's when I was like, okay, like I, I have it in my notes, and I have different thoughts now. But I, I like where I was when I was watching the movie. I was like, I hate this movie, but I respect it. Yeah, was my thought that 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 sh- that scene is something like almost out of like a David Lynch film. It is so like, interesting the way he puts it together. Yeah. You know how the the, the image ju- images like the sound fades out of what they're saying, and this image of the past comes forward. Yeah, and it's almost like a photograph, like you're looking at, and you know it shows you some sad part of his childhood. You know, it's like why his parents are, you know, why he despises them so much, mm-hmm. and why they despise him. It's, but I don't understand why they despise. Him. I don't understand the dad so much. Well, yeah, the you, mom the, explains. The, yeah, that makes total sense because. 
the mom missed one game that they lost because That's she had to have well, yes, him. Yes, yes, yes. Right. right. And they haven't won a Super Bowl since. And she's watching and, that and same game, what, every year? No, she's year? watching she's watching the 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 ninety one game yeah. that he bet on. Okay. She watches she that. She is watching the she previous game. She watches that game, game yes, all the over time. and over and over again. And that's the one that he put the bet on and, and you right. know, got himself in jail. So that's that's kind of an interesting uh, thing where he's like sitting there in this house. Even when he's walking up to the house, he can hear the mom yelling at that game. And that game fucked his life up completely. And he has to sit there in the house while she watches the game. Yeah. And blaring in the background, just reminding him of the fucking mistakes now, he made. Now, I have an interesting question for all of you um, about the father and son's relationship. Did you not catch at one point in time they're sitting at a table? They're both doing and the they're hand both thing. doing the ha- yes, same hand yeah, gestures, yeah. the same kind of like thing, like yeah, the way they're to resting show that head. like they're they're almost the same person to some extent, like yeah. or that he couldn't escape being his father to to some level. I did catch that. Yeah. And I love that little layer that they put in there because. I mean, it's obvious they're perfectly lined up. Mm-hmm. You know, like they both are doing the exact same motion. And it does tell you something about the characters, both of them. It's like, now I'm understanding the father more. And, you know, you're also like, wow, this is like the older version of what Billy might become. And what what do you think? Okay, I'm, I'm getting from the father that he regrets his life because he used to be this singer. And then they had Billy. Yeah, so I understand that it. that's where his regret, to, uh, where, where his disdain for Billy is. Mm-hmm. The mother, not I don't I don't quite understand. It's because of the Buffalo it's Bills. It's the game. It's the game. It's she's because a, she's totally a, obsessed. She's completely yeah. obsessed with the Buffalo Bills. Oh, that's Bills. right, right, because it, she He was him born on that day. Born on that day. Born on the day okay. that they lost the Super Bowl. Okay, yeah. So that's pretty ridiculous. So it's but. two kind of ridiculous things that they're blaming on the son. That yeah. their lives didn't turn out the way they wanted it to exactly. because they had this kid who didn't really ask to be put so into it, this world. <laughs> you can see that it's, it's if for a for person watching it for the first time, it's not an easy like catch on to the joke right away. I you know la- first time I there's watched, a lot of heavy first shit. Time I watched it. I I was I I mean I distinctly remember like laughing or being you know being entertained by just the notion of him like not being able to find a place to piss i remember thinking that was funny see i didn't find that funny at all i just thought it was odd. too real too real for me (laughs) it was this odd and out of place where i really started laughing was the photo booth scene Oh yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. That was <laughs> just funny. spanning time. Just spanning time. Well, He's well, well. It over well who again. didn't fall in love with Christina Ricci right off the bat? Oh yeah, dude, totally. Like, and Come on. like, why do you think that is though? What is it about her character? They, that she has an angel glow to her. That's exactly she, what it she's is. She's always she's always wearing white. There's, she's lit up white, yeah. bright. Like she has like an angel glow to her throughout the whole movie. Yeah. And yeah. that's I think that's kind of the message too, though. And she was only seventeen actually when she did this role. Yeah. And She's God is she beautiful? Yeah. Oh my gosh! Like, it's 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 crazy. I mean, she's beautiful now, but like even back then, she was uh, she was like just su- like an angelic looking. Yeah. Like, they that- make her ra- they're radiant, and she's radiant in this. She film. does. They like, do make her radiant. They do. Yeah. Yeah. I I thought radiant. she was so good though to play the opposite of uh, of Vincent Gallo. Like I mean, ima- just think about her like at the dinner scene while we're on that topic, you know. What the whole CIA speech? <laughs> the whole CIA funny. speech and how it like the even the president loves him, you know? And yeah. it's just like And the dad just sitting there like you She's trying wow. so hard. She's trying so hard to hold him up, you know, but she doesn't well, yeah, knows it, nothing it, about the situation. Yeah, and and, and it, it, it she, I think she realized how depressing of the world he came from like after as she's in the middle of trying to tell this awesome story about Billy, the mom like shuts her up and like it's like watching and then, the game. and watches the game end and she's like I wish I never had him. Yeah. And she had the realization like wow, he came from like a fucked up house like now I what I'm saying, it asshole. got real. Things got real. But but I am going I want to get back to Christina Ricci for a second because I actually have some qualms with her character. Okay. And that Qualm she didn't away. really have a character. Like, she was... I, and I hate to use the term because it's all cliche now, but she is a manic pixie dream girl, but... Kind of starting to sound like Vincent Gallo. I think he described her as a puppet that did everything he asked her to uh, as an actress. Y- well, I mean, if he was going for that, he did a pretty good job. Well, Even I, I, written, right. she doesn't really have any kind of backstory. Really don't know what's going no. on with her in any way. She's really just there to awaken 
Billy at some point in this film. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's all she does. She's not really a strong character. She's not really she's not even really a presence, really. She's just there to act well, against. I disagree with the presence part. Yeah. Like I she, feel like she has a she is like the other lead actor in this film. You well, know what sure, I mean? like, but she has nothing that we know about her other than she's there to act against Billy. Well, here's where I disagree. Because without her, you don't have the end of the film. But she doesn't really do anything. Yes, she, yes, does. she does. She does. The whole time she's doing Yeah, it. the whole time she's just actually just there. No, the whole, the whole time, time she's, she's being nice she's to him. And building him yes, up. Yes, but we don't know why she's doing this because or what's she's going attracted on in her to him. Because she's attracted and she feels bad for him. And she's probably. a kind spirit. And an angel. She probably, she, <laughs> obviously, she's a she dancer. She probably thinks she can fix we, him. That's she's what it comes dancer. down to. Would you guys have had an issue with the parents if it was never understood or explained why the father or the mother hated the son? Would, Would you I, be like, well, what, the, what? Why? Why is this happening? Why are we not asking the same question about this girl? Because without her, you don't have the end of the film. Okay, and without the parents, he wouldn't have been in turmoil. But we know why that but see, is. Okay, uh, okay. This I was gonna save this for a little bit later, uh, but I gotta break it out now. Here's my here's my problem with 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 the ending, and with with the, where you could actually throw Christina Ricci away. When I was thinking about this movie, and I, and I broke it down to its like core of core for me, this is a revenge film. It is exactly a revenge film. He goes to prison for five years. He gets out and he's going to kill the guy. His whole plan is to go to kill a guy that he thinks put him there, which is just a place kicker on the bills. Which is just a place yeah. kicker on the bills. Yeah, right. And I actually thought the film ended uh, in the in the in the scene where he kills him. Yeah, and he kills himself. And I was like, "Holy fuck, yes, that was amazing. That's how this film should have ended. Like, yes." And then. It was just like a dream sequence, and I was like, "Fuck you!" <laughs> <laughs> but, but like that's the thing is like it's a re it's a revenge. It, like that's what it is at its core is is it's honestly it's a revenge film. Yeah, that's what moves him forward in the story. I mean, he's that's he, the whole story. He's without that story, there is no story. Mike's right. That's kind of <laughs> without no, that story. I, I, I actually kind of disagree. I feel like I feel like him getting revenge almost felt like a subplot. How's that a subplot? Because without that, he doesn't realize that he has something. Like he he realizes he he can't kill himself because he does have a girl to live for. No, but without the girl, he wouldn't have. He would have just killed him. So if she didn't exist, he would have actually killed him, and his life would have been over. I, know, I, I wish. But he because would've... she's there, he that now sees that there's something more important that's than also, revenge. That's also proving my point of like why you need Christina Ricci because if you don't have her in there. Then he kills himself. No, I understand yeah. that. She's, but I still think that's the way the movie. Hold on, end. I understand that she's there as a catalyst to make him make this choice. But she's purely there for his benefit. She's not there for her own. That's my problem. Just because you don't know that, though. But but that's the only thing I can. One could gather assume from that she's got a really shitty car. In. She's got a really shitty car. One can assume she's in in it for herself in, in, in some degree because she's putting herself through that. I understand that, but she's just a mannequin doing this without any motivation given to us through the story. Why does that bother you so much? Because that's not a well written character. Hmm. I don't know. I, I dis I disagree on an emotional level for some reason. I don't. I maybe I can't put it into words, but I mean, don't get me wrong. We can all can we, the visual parts of how she is presented. No, just we've her, already described her, her as an angelic. And she talks and and radiant in a way. Sure, there's an appeal to that to see it as like yeah, this but the way that guiding she treats light, him. If you look, if you were okay. Mike. The way that she treats him is also a big part of it. That tells you a lot about her character. It does tell you something about her character. It tells you a lot about her character. But without any motivation, what's the point? A puppy is going to treat me really nice, but I don't yeah. know why a puppy's until doing it. Until your dad she, kills puppies it aren't human beings. in the house too many times. Basically, oh, she basically fell for him. She that fell in love with him, and that's what drove her, like... Do, does 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 so love no, have no a motivation? One, or you just fucking yes, act on lo it. Love definitely has what, a motivation. What's your motivation? For love? There you, should be a motivation. We're getting for off love. track. We're really getting no, off track. No, but I'm just trying this. to figure out like why Mike bo is bothers Mike so much. I don't know, but we can talk either. about another subject. Okay, let's just move on. <laughs> hey guys, when we come back, we're gonna talk more about the music and the cinematography of Buffalo sixty six. We'll be right back.
All right, where's the thing on this car? How do you put it in gear? Where's right the thing? Here. What is this? Is this is this a shifter car? I cannot drive a shifter car, right? So we got a little situation here. I can't drive these kind of cars. What the fuck is going on? You think that's funny? Would you like to know, smartass? Would you like to know why I can't drive this kind of car? I'll tell you why. I'm used to luxury cars. Have you ever heard of a luxury car? You know what luxury means? Have you ever heard of Cadillac? Cadillac Eldorado? That's what I drive. I drive cars that shift themselves. My cars shift themselves. The luxury cars, they shift themselves. Hey guys, we're back and we're talking about Buffalo 66 and Colt Film Review. And uh, I want to talk more about the music and cinematography. Uh, let's start off with the music first. Um, it's got some punk in it. Most of the music is Vincent Gallo, yeah. Mr. Renaissance Man. Like he, <laughs> he did most of it, and then uh, I believe King Crimson, King Crimson, and, yep, and yes, were, correct. Were See, used. all punk bands, totally no, punk. Not, not. Isn't that punk, <laughs> isn't that punk to these kids today? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that I think the music really fit this film well. It I, did, me yeah. Too. Great, it, it's a great soundtrack. It, it helped tell the story and give you that mood, give you the mood for whatever scene or weird thing was going on. Especially that fi the final scene. Well, I keep saying thinking of it as the final scene, but the scene in the strip club, like the music just fits that 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 whole it's build up really so well. So intense, yeah. yeah. And then it builds up, and then it's dead quiet during that whole shot, which is the camera what basically sp rotating like. So he basically ripped off, and the way it, the, from what I read on it, he was basically making fun of or satiring like the use of that camera because that's the same kind of camera technique they use for like Matrix to shoot all that stuff. Okay. So and, and I had to look it up, and it was yeah, it was the same year, right? The Matrix came 98? out in ninety eight. Oh, I, I, I not don't know. sure, not sure. Yeah. So, but that was basically ripped on, but it worked so well. It looked so fucking powerful. It was a powerful scene. Yeah, well, and I'm I'm curious. I didn't read anything on how they how they did the scene, but when it's rotating, they're basically when the camera's rotating around the characters that are dying. Essentially, there's like blood coming out of their head, but everything's frozen in time. But the camera is moving, and I'm just like, I'm kind of curious. Is it, they just set up a bunch of cameras around them, all take a picture at that exact same time, and then yeah, basically that's how they, they do that shot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I was a little yeah. confused, like. God, it just looks so good, you know. But like the film, which is, is so weird, like that that scene seems so out of place to the rest of this movie. Because I mean, a lot of a lot of the shots are very static. There's not like, you know, for that to just pop in, it just seems so out of place for this movie, for the budget of this movie, and everything. It just... That's your that's your end action scene in the revenge story. Like that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Like it was a very weird. I felt like that's like the whole time watching this. I'm like, this is the weirdest way I've ever seen to tell a revenge story. Yeah. Like I was like, this is very odd, and I should have seen the ending coming with him not. I liked doing I, it. I like that they gave it to you though. I mean, because he could have just been like, eh, I'm not going to do it, you know. But instead, they give you it as as if he were to do it, and then they go back and say like, okay, you got to see the coolness now. Like, here's the the real message. You know, the interesting thing about that shot though for me was that I did see it coming. I did not think that was reality, and it was because. It was the one fluid shot. It was the one kind of like ethereal like shot of the entire thing. Hmm. Everything else is so jarring mm -hmm. and static. Mm -hmm. And this is the one thing that's fluid and it's moving. It's a completely different yeah, cinematography. It's the only one that's style. not it's the only one that's not from the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's so many overhead shots and they this do movie. a lot of those, yeah. For sure. I mean, it's not that I don't like it. Yeah. I do like it. And there's a lot of framing. In this movie too, which I really enjoyed, especially with like the dinner table scene, they frame a lot. And that's that, and I really like it. That that's for me. I'm trying to figure out if he was trying to mock, well, not necessarily mock, but an homage to like a Reservoir Dogs or the Round Table kind of thing. But at the same time, like, did you not get the feel from that shot that each one of those camera angles was a point of view of yeah, yeah. somebody yeah. at the at other end of the table yeah. Yeah. and how they were seeing everything? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I, mean, I, I love that, that. I thought that was yeah. really brilliant. Actually, oh, it's one of my favorite dinner table scenes. Like the way it was. Oh, shot. Oh, it's so funny, I dude. Really like. Yeah, the way that it was scene shot. is hilarious. It's funny and sad all at the same time. Like it, 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 it takes you on a little bit of a roller coaster of a conversation, you know, and and even sometimes pausing at awkward moments and just jumping into something completely different. And you're like, wow, the like the way this family communicates is so strange. Yeah, don't point a knife. Don't point enough oh, at yeah. your father. The knife was not yeah. pointed at you. It was right here on the table. No, it wasn't. 
<laughs> my god this whole that whole scene is so well it's just the timing on everybody yeah the is dialogue so is perfect in that scene do you think a lot of it was ad-libbed or uh, i don't think so no i think i think i think i think gallo strikes me the director that everything is exactly how he wrote it mm-hmm. if he did man he man did he go on the repetition thing yes yeah. I mean, he did that that especially the phone booth thing. Oh yeah, over and over and over. It just keeps going the same line over and over. You know, it's the way he delivers it though. That's why it works. You know, because it kind of works with his accent, like his New York kind of mm-hmm. accent, and and his his neurotic personality. You know, you're just kind of like, okay, like if this guy was talking to me, I wouldn't think it was weird. I would just think this is how this guy speaks. You know, so you wouldn't think. It is kind of like I, the way I, I took it is like, oh, you're an evil Woody Allen. <laughs> <laughs> an evil Woody Allen. That's a good comparison. Th- that's no, that's what I got from it. Like that's what I got from the character. I'm like, oh, you're an evil Woody Allen. It mm-hmm. was like that's the thing too. Is like I don't know if this movie brings anything new that I haven't seen before, but it, it does bring it in a new way. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, f- like I said, Vincent Gallo's character to me, I was like, you're you're a neurotic Woody Allen just turned up higher. Yeah. Like yeah. On, honestly, that's what I got from did it. Did you find like, him likable? Yes. Okay. I did. Mid movie. Yeah. Mid movie. Mid movie is when I, I I start liking him as a character. Oh, you well, know. One, once you see him with his parents and you see the reason why he's yeah, that then way, you, then you, then can start there, you can't him. do. There's nothing more than you can do than start to relate to him and try to kind of empathize with the guy. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I mean, when you see how <laughs> monsters his parents are, they're absolute beasts. Yeah. They're horrible people. Yeah. I liked him from the I liked him from the get go, even from the bus station. Like, it, I don't know, just the way he delivers his his lines, and yeah, because he is so neurotic. It that's because you're it was angry. Really enjoyable. That's oh, because I'm angry. That's because you're angry all the time. <laughs> is that yeah. what it is? You know who that's else is really enjoyable? Goon. 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 Yeah, I like Goon's character. I think I it's, love that actor. It's it, it also it, this is what I think is interesting about Billy's character is 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 that side of him that they show, which is. He, his only friend, really, that he can call or that will do anything for him is is mentally challenged in some way, I can assume. You know, that's... Or slow or something. And, you know, for, for this to be, like, his only friend, it kind of shows... It kind of shows you how he values himself. But at the same time, this friend is, like, genuine. You know what I mean? Yeah, but he's also a punching bag. He's a punching bag, yes. Well, everybody's a punching bag for that, that the is, character in the movie. It's like, hard everyone. to have friends when you're like that, you know? But you, you find people, and there's like people want to be around you for one reason It's or just another. like, of course, his only friend is a simpleton that just <laughs> takes it over and over and over again. Well, if you if you look at it, like even like you said with Christina Ricci's character, like the characters that he kind of ends up really caring about or does care about are puppets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like in his people that just do that, everything that, that he, he asks them to yeah. do. He yeah. has these moments. Even the bo- even the bowling, the bowling yeah, the guy, guy. It was like infatuated with him. Yeah. So like everybody that's kind of like friends with him is like, yeah, like has the dude, to the love dude him. paid his bowling membership for the last five years. Like what I appreciate though is that he has these moments with these characters. You know, like yeah, it comes across that way completely. I I agree, but he has these moments where like at the end, right before he's about to go in and murder uh, Scott Wood. He uh, he calls Goon and he has a conversation and he basically apologizes to him and like comes to terms with the fact that he knows he's this way. You know what I yeah. mean? And yes. he apologizes. And, you know, it's kind of funny because when we find out it's a dream or, or he decides not to actually go through with it, he calls him back and basically turns back into his old self again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm taking I feel it like- back. I feel, like, I feel like there's moments like that with him and these characters that show you, like, he's got this really hard, weird shell over him, but inside, like, that's not really how he feels. But he always, and he was always apologizing to uh, Christina Ricci's character throughout, like, the whole movie. Yeah. For everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, he leaves he leaves her at Denny's and then ends up coming back and... Yeah, because, he, again, he has to pee, which yeah. is a big motivation in this movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which I think is just, like, it's like, why that? I don't understand it, but the fact that he called her Wendy Balsam because of his high school crush, who happens to show up at that at Denny's, Denny's. Yeah. yeah, which was a really good performance by Rosanna Arquette. I, I, I thought it was totally appropriate, and I hated her. I was like, oh, I'm yeah. glad Again, you don't want, you're not with her. Just an asshole. Yeah. yeah, his whole life is shaped by assholes. Yeah. Like that's that's we why can't I, hate I him don't want to go to Buffalo. 
<laughs> that's kind of why I don't want to go too. Everybody in this movie is a dick. Even when he like walks into that restaurant in the beginning, restaurants closed. Can I just use the bathroom? I said restaurants closed. He goes and bathrooms like, closed. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, it's just everybody's just got an attitude. But is that is that is something he was trying to say about like New York? In general, you think? It's just about his, just about how himself. he views human yeah. beings, probably. What about uh? So the dialogue then, like, that's kind of where I I struggle a little bit with this movie. I, I yeah, that's probably my favorite part of yeah. this movie. I mean, it gets better when it, like, but in the very beginning, you're like when you don't realize it's a comedy because I, and it's even hard for me to say that this movie is a comedy because it's not really a comedy. I think this movie's hilarious. I think there's a lot of comedy in this there's, movie. There is, but like. At first, when it's you a don't, dark comedy. when you don't know again the character's backstory of where he came from, you just think he's like this weird neurotic dick, which is hilarious from the from the dialogue. Yeah, but the but the film shapes up, and then we start understanding where everything's coming from. There's a and the dialogue gets funnier then. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some real, there are some really funnier. funny. By things. the time you get to the photo booth, now you really understand his yeah. character. So when you get to that, that is the most famous scene in this film is the photo booth scene. And it's the whole spanning time speech, you know, <laughs> like we're the couple that loves each other, but we do not touch each other. <laughs> do not kiss me. <laughs> and he's got the same face for every. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's their love spanning time. Yeah. Yeah. It's so- I, 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 I immediately pictured that uh, that famous piece of art. What is that with the the farmer and his wife? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is he that? had that same face. He had that exact same face. Just, just dead. <laughs> yeah. I did appreciate that they shot it to look like you were looking through the camera. That yeah, they did a lot of shots like that. Yeah. This movie is fit. Yeah, yeah. It's really well done. Almost everything is shot like it's almost coming from a point of view of something else. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. it, not like a static or not like a camera. Yeah, I agree. It's like a sentient being watching over. So I have a question. Do you think Christina Ricci's tap dance to uh, was a moon child? Uh, was just Vincent Gallo just loving on King Crimson. I don't know. That scene doesn't make any sense. It's the only scene in this movie that I think doesn't make any sense. Is, what like, is, it doesn't what feel is it? like it like, belongs what, to be I there. always kind of wondered, like, what is this supposed to be? Is it just her her imagination? Is it... it, it it's another... I kind of think it's more or less him uh, n- for the first time noticing her. I don't know. I didn't get As, it. I didn't get it that his his point of view. It's her only moment. And it's then, her only moment where she actually does something. I think it's where he starts finally, separate from him. I think like it's like where he finally starts getting attracted to her. Okay, I think, and it's okay. probably the moment where she doesn't. She finally doesn't feel threatened at all because she's kind of just enjoying herself. Because he's broken out of his world. He can't bowl because it's broken, and there's nothing else going on in the bowling alley. And there she is. And I think it's like it. I almost feel like that part was in his head where he, hmm. you know, and she was just kind of like. That scene at the end of it where she comes back and she's just kind of tapping a little bit, walking up. I think that's kind of what was going on. But in his head, it played this big elaborate scene. Just like the in, in her head, when his father was singing, it was like right. this big elaborate thing. Yeah. So yeah. And he I, was just he was just lip singing. Yeah. I kind of take it as gotcha. that. It, you know what? Then, well, now going back to it, what I said before... It might be the only characterization she has, and maybe that's the way she looks at the world as like a fantasy. Like, or she every- looks at everything. Everything is much better than it is. She gives everything right because, like, this father when he's singing, is he lip singing or is he actually singing? Because I have to imagine he's actually. singing. I took it as he was actually. singing. Now here's the question: Is she view? Is she listening to it through her like? In a weird fantasy world, yes, I think so. That is not the voice that if you if there were third person there was watching it objectively, yeah, maybe he sounds horrible, right, right, probably. But in her mind, she sees it as this like what like like Four Seasons kind of like <laughs> grand thing. Yeah. It's grand. It's like yeah, Frank Sinatra, like a Frankie Valley. Yeah, yeah like it's, singing on. I think so, and maybe that's where those two connect. Um, is they both have their moments in this film that are that are embracing each other's each other in yeah. some way. Like, she's taking in, okay, I accept this as family life. I'm going to make the best of it, whatever. And then, like, he, t- you know, he finally, like you said, comes to the realization that, like, I care about this person. Yeah. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. Sit down. We're taking pictures from my parents. Do you understand that? Mm-hmm. We're taking pictures like we're a couple, like we like each other, like we're, we're husband and wife, and we span time together. We span time together as a couple. 
because we're a loving couple spanning time. These photos are us in love spanning time. No bullshit faces, no funny faces. Just look like you like me. That's all I want. Just look like you like me. That's it. Can you do that? So what are uh, some of your likes and what are some of your dislikes? What what's really strong in this film and what's what is the weak? Well, I've, I've told I've already I think I've already explained my dislike, um, but so I'll just go right into my likes. Um, the sh- the cinematography is beautiful. In this I agree. Movie. It's so good. Like the visuals, the way he does things, um, the color, the colors. Yeah, the I'm, color. I'm, I'm. There are some things that I'm trying to figure out if he was trying to allude to certain things. Like he's always wearing these red shoes. Mm-hmm. Is is it supposed to be like? A Wizard of Oz reference? Yeah, exactly. Yes, that's exactly what I thought. I kinda, is this supposed to be like, is he like a Dorothy in some way? Mm-hmm. Well, what are the Buffalo Bills colors? Uh, blue and white. And red, white, red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue. Yeah. And that pops up everywhere in the film. It does. That, well, there you go. And he's wearing He's wearing blue. a blue, basically denim, right? Yeah. yeah, he's just wearing denim head to toe with red boots. He's wearing the old Canadian tuxedo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. And uh, some red velour shoes. Are they, <laughs> well, well, if you look at it, if you if you look at and it, though, he's wearing, so he's wearing denim head to toe. He's got red boots, and Christine Ricci is white. Right. Again, another reference there we to go. Buffalo Bills. There we go. Yeah, throughout the film, that that. Well, that's I like think the... she's like white, bluish because she's. I, again, I think she's supposed to be posed in that like angelic. Light. Yeah, is her her eyes are blue in this, right? Like, are they? They feel they feel blue, even if I if they're not, they feel it like yeah. it should they should be right. Yeah, but I I, I I still think it was a conscious decision to to have that color palette. No, I think you're right. Red, I think I think you hit the nail right on the head on that. Pepper it all. Well, the over. film yeah. feels very blue and cold. I mean, most of the movie, and, and there are certain scenes where you do get. Well, yeah, it is shot during winter time, so you get so those colors pop even more against that background mm-hmm. too. So right, especially since yeah. the, the entire I mean the air, the whole area of Buffalo was just so dismal. Yeah, yeah, it's just. This is like a what is this? Sorry for our fall? listeners out there in Buffalo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry we're shitting on Buffalo right now. Sorry this film makes Buffalo look terrible. Make a new movie, Buffalo. Yeah. <laughs> Get on it. Show us into how great Buffalo yeah. is. I don't really have many. I can't think of any dislikes. I, I can't I think can't... of any dislikes. No. Mm-mm. Yeah, I I, the di- I gotta go with Mike on this one. Dialogue is repetitive sometimes to the point. I where love the dialogue, but, but I don't. I actually don't think that's a negative thing. I, if I you were to do. ask me, I would say not a negative thing. No, I would probably put dialogue as one of my favorite things. It's, it's like it's it's yeah. it's neurotic and hilarious and and weird, like all mashed. It's just bizarre and it's enjoyable to listen to. Like the way he delivers, even the the dinner table conversation where he's fighting with his dad over the knife pointing at him. It's like such a bizarre situation, but it's very comical. Executed well, you know. Yeah, I think also, I, I think a, the writing is pretty good. Also, I have a problem with the ending. It's just so sappy. It's just so. Yeah, I guess you know what. If I had so to say something, sappy. I would probably say the ending could have gone either way. Dude, if it would have ended with him actually, but then that would have that would have that would have null and voided the entire the entire film of Christina Ricci. It, re- yeah. it would have, but then it would have then you would have been like, "Whoa, that was just a crazy weird revenge story." Yeah, but the only problem is with that You have a movie either way. You want to have some sort of character arc if he had gone through with it and just died. What what was the point of we watching this film? <laughs> exactly. Why did we watch this film to watch a guy just descend and, and then kill himself? Like it's Kinda, it, yeah. Yeah, but there, that's not real. That's another thing. That's not really good storytelling if you don't have their but main it's character. More, has, but it's more reality. Now, well, I mean, I guess his co- conversation with Dune Oddly could enough. be considered some sort of arc, and we could have left it at, well, he made amends, but then yeah. he left this poor girl in, in the hotel, yeah. and nothing ever came of it, so, yeah. Yeah, and I, I love. It's got to end on a happier. I note. do like the scene. Or at least a happier note, and then he dies. At the scene at the end, though, where he's in the coffee shop, oh. donut store is yeah. funny. Is hilarious <laughs> yeah, it to is. me. You got oh. a girlfriend at home because you can tell how much Get him a happy cookie. he doesn't act like that through any of the rest no, of, the until the end of the movie. Like, and that one scene is he's just happy and blissful. Like, well, it was like, well, it, at the end is he sees the guy and he figures it all out. Like that's what it is. It's Not to like, mention, it's my one of my favorite lines in the whole film was when he's talking to Goon on the phone. He's like, "He was actually a really nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> he seemed like a really normal guy, you know. <laughs> you know, he, you know he, what? He, he missed a all- kick. He he hit all the other kicks all season. Yeah, like, he great played season. good all season. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so good. But it, good. It, that was the big character thing. Is like he needed to see him to move on. I think that was the big character arc. Yeah, yeah. I think some yeah. of the some of the dialogue. But the- if he had shot him. 
there and, wouldn't and, have been that wouldn't have existed. And that because he wouldn't have that, came but, to any realization other than what he came to. But do. it would have ended visually stunning, and you would have been like, oh. Fuck. No, I, but, I would, but going back yeah. to what you're saying, seeing him though, he and he didn't even like the guy wasn't like he didn't look good. Like he was in like a really yeah. sleazy situation, oh, you know? Yeah. Like he had like three naked women around him and he's just drunk and just Yeah, so it's not like he won, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Maybe he did, but maybe he just looks like a slob. But it does uh, Vincent Gallo wins? Yes, he does. Yeah, Vincent Gallo does win. He, he sees that and right. he's like, you know what? My life's not that bad. Which it really is. It re- <laughs> but and, and he comes to the realization, ultimately, this guy didn't put him in jail. He put himself in jail. Yes. Yes. Everything he that made all his actions bad. did this. Yeah. What about uh, so going into the wardrobe too? Uh, some of the things I want to talk about with the wardrobe uh, when he bets on the Buffalo Bills, I, I, I like. <laughs> And all the Buffalo Bills gear he's wearing. Yeah, but I think, yeah, yeah, so good. I th- but I think that has to do a lot with like his mom. Yeah, I think he was caught up, caught up in the Oddly hype of enough. his mom. Because I mean, why does he make the bet? Is he is he doing it to make money, or do you think he's doing it because hey, my mom would lo- is gonna love me a lot more if this if this redemption happens probably that she missed, and not only that, but I'm gonna make like sixty thousand dollars off of this. Oh yeah, yeah. probably. I, that's what I got from it. Me too. Yeah, I think I think he was just trying to get some kind of you know respect from his mother. That's why he was even like into the bills. Mm-hmm. You know, you get that from a lot of his his motivation from characters is to please his parents, which I think is a is a Generation X thing. Is that Generation Millennials? We don't care. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Generation X is that Generation could X be. thing? Could be. Could be. I feel everybody like has is. daddy and mommy issues. I feel like that is because you guys were having. I've seen the Jerry Springer episodes. You guys were having kids. At like thirteen, fourteen, <laughs> <laughs> millennials pushed it back to the thirties. Like, you know, we wait, we wait. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot. We, do. we enjoy ourselves. We got first. stuff to do. We said, "Hey, forties the new thirty. We got time." <laughs> yeah, that's what much. we said. The wardrobe. I mean, it doesn't really change too much. You just get introduced to characters, and you know. Yeah, it never really changes. But I do. I I do agree with you with the red boots thing. I almost feel like it's a it's a throw to. Wizard of Oz, because they stand out so much. They do really stand out. I don't, really think, do. I don't think Vincent Gallo is trying to be like, look, Wizard of Oz reference. I feel I like just the, don't see him as as that kind of a person. I feel like the the the, the most iconic wardrobe piece in this movie. Yeah, I agree with that, but I think I, I I'm sticking to my guns. I think it's more except a, for maybe Ricky more Mar- of a reference to like the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, again. I would tend to agree with Kyle because there's nothing else really in this film that would suggest that this was a Wizard of Oz tale. Disagree. What What else would there be? Glinda the Good Witch. Christina Ricci. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Fan theory. No, but Glinda the Good Witch never actually goes with Dorothy on on the journey. And guess what? There's no Scarecrow. There's guess no what? Tin Man. There's no Carol. Yeah, huh? Line. There's an Oz. Who? The uh, kicker. Yeah, but why? Was he, was he a fraud? And Scarecrow is goon. He, wasn't and a, think he doesn't of, have a brain. And th- yeah. Actually, I would have thought he and was more the about it. lion. But Hold okay. on. Think about this. <laughs> he is on a journey the whole time to get to... Oh, God. The Emerald City, known as the Strip Club. I mean, I, yeah. Oh. And guess what? Buffalo is the yellow brick road. We're talking about that more when we come back. Uh, you, you have hot chocolate, right? Sure do. Is it hot? It's hot. All right, give me a uh, hot chocolate to go, a large one, large one. Okay. okay, hot chocolate to go, large. Make one it good, go. make it good, good one. It'll be good. Hey, let me have one of these, uh, let me have a heart cookie, too. That's nice. How much are the heart cookies? Heart cookies? I think are 95 cents. 95? Right. Okay. You got a girlfriend? Yeah? All right, I'm going to buy one for him. Okay. It's for your girlfriend, all right? Girlfriend, don't chomp on it yourself. Save it for her. Hey, guys, we're back. And all I'm saying about Vincent Gallo's Buffalo 66 is that his mom was the Wicked Witch and his dad was the Flying Monkeys, (laughs) and it's pretty much the same film as The Wizard of Oz. You are making such a stretch here, man. How? Be- it's the same it's story. Not really. It's I mean, all a story of revenge, just like Dorothy. You could do that. Dorothy doesn't have a story I of swear revenge. To, I you can do this. Oz. Home. I've seen Return to Oz. You can do this with any film. <laughs> That's you can why do this she with came the Matrix. back, Kyle. You can do this with The Matrix. How? 
Uh, you know, Trinity. Vince, Vince Trinity Gallo is not being used Trinity for batteries. Trinity is the scary, scary, scary thing. And, and <laughs> what? He's not being used as batteries. That's what they use humans no, for. No, he uses oh everybody else's hu- as, as. Yeah, he does. Oh, he's the he's the machine. He's the machine. Boom. Now you're fucking turning around. Yeah. Kyle, take Agent a, Smith. There you taking go. Taking us into a different world. Uh, <laughs> Agent Bill. Is there anything else anybody wants to hit on? Um, I, w- I do want to talk a little bit about the bowling alley scene. Uh, I, I really enjoyed a lot of the stuff in the bowling alley. It was just the bowling alley itself had a lot of character. Yeah. So yeah. I I don't know I just I really enjoyed because I mean that was his alley. that was his glory that the was the king is hot yeah. the king is hot yeah <laughs> and you know what and that was another thing where I felt like he was very similar to his father he was a king in this world and this prison imprisonment happened and it ruined it like he had like that was his future uh-huh. like he could have been he could have been great he could have been a yeah contender. you could see you could see all the trophies in his locker he oh, yeah he could have been a Munson. Yeah, he was a Munson. He was. He Munson'd. was a Munson. He got Munson. He got totally. I don't, Munson'd. Know, what I don't know what that means either. No not, one's seen out of the Kingpin. Joke. No one's, no seen, one's seen this film. I don't remember that. Next week yeah. we're doing Kingpin. I didn't no. think that was a good movie when I saw it. I so liked I it. Oh my god, that movie. So, anyways, so <laughs> enough about Kingpin and my reference to that. Um, I just enjoyed the, the bowling alley stuff. His parents are crazy. Uh, how are we gonna rate in this? Um, I want to do. I personally want to do uh, shifter cars. <laughs> Well, All right, Kyle. Go. How many shifter Eldorado cars would you give this? I don't even know. <laughs> what? No shifter cars. Shifter cars. Shifter cars. That's what we're doing. Shifter cars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shifter All right. Cars. How many shifter cars would you give this? Um, I think I'm going to give this movie uh, probably three and a half shifter cars. I really enjoy the movie. I wouldn't say it's the greatest movie I've ever seen, so that's why it's not at a four level, four or five. Um, I think it the there's a lot of humor to this film. The dialogue is great. The writing, the writing is good. The, the performance, cinematography, fantastic. Um, a lot of the shots totally catch you off guard, and they're very intelligent shots. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna do three and a half. I like this movie. I think it's fun. All right, Mike, how many shifter cars? I am uh, also gonna give it three and a half shifter cars. Uh, this story is nothing unique, really. It this could be Garden State. It could be any film where. There is a guy who is down and out in his luck and sad, and he meets a girl, and she awakens him for whatever reason. Uh, but besides that, the visuals in this film are absolutely amazing. Uh, the cinematography is fantastic, and uh, I think the dialogue is really good, too. So I, 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 I got to give it more than three, so three and a half. Three and a half. All right, so I'll go next. Um Hmm. See, this is tough for me because this is my first time watching it. I feel like I really got to give it a second watch. Um, I, I really do to feel like to give it a fair rating. I'm going to give it a two and a half right now. And that's middle of the road. That's not bad. That's middle of the road. We do it out of five. That's the fucking like, middle. Yeah, okay. it's, it's dead middle. It's dead middle. OK, and that's barring another watch. There's things I enjoyed about it and there's things that I didn't enjoy about it. Um, you know, it kind of goes along with any story that is about a guy who gets taken away to a mystical land where he has to follow yellow brick road. <laughs> You know, to find a guy to, you know, take all his pain away. But then he realizes his pain wasn't there to begin with and that this magical witch lady can take it away the whole time. So anyways, <laughs> no, I've been giving it I've been giving it two and a half. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I got to watch it again. There's a lot of things I liked about it. Cinematography is beautiful. Um, so definitely watch it for that alone. I think it, it would be my advice. Chris, shifter cards. I'm going five. I knew it. I am going I knew you all were do it. the freaking way. You dude. just peeled out in that shifter car. I did, dude. I love this movie. I it is probably in my top five favorite films ever made. Um, I I love Vincent Gallo's character. I think he's hilarious. I think I the comedy is what struck me initially when I watched this film was his character is just so outrageous to me that I had to laugh at at what was going on but i also i think there's a lot of heart in this film um and uh you know i love the characters i think they're very quirky the world he lives in is is quirky and sad but kind of realistic at the same time and i don't know i just connect with it i can watch it all the time i think it's fucking awesome and i'm going full five full a full five shifter cars full five shifter five cars. speed it's got a five speed dialogue is amazing All right, guys, that's our show for this week. Uh, This was Buffalo 66 from Vincent Gallo. We are Cult Film and Review. You can actually follow us on Instagram at Cult Film underscore Review. You can follow us on Facebook. Uh, You can also follow us 
on Instagram or Twitter. Twitter, that's it. That's the one I'm thinking <laughs> of. You can follow us on Twitter at Cult Film underscore Review. Uh, you can follow Mike at uh, at Mike Salucio on Twitter, and you can uh, maybe read some stuff that I write about films on FriendlyNeighborhoodFilmmaking.com. Guys, don't forget to send us your suggestions for uh, fan picks. We are already in the midst of picking some. Uh, we got a fan pick coming up soon. Or it's after this? Or no. Coming up soon. Coming up soon. Up. No. I don't know. It's somewhere. We'll have a couple. They'll be around. <laughs> uh, also, make sure you go on iTunes, rate us five stars, and subscribe. And uh, thanks for listening, guys. We'll catch you next week. <laughs>